Hey, welcome back, cameras. Back covering ELA, Reading Literature 2.4, Craft and Structure. This time we're interpreting the meanings of figurative language, figurative speech. I'm Mr. McDaniel. We're back into this particular lesson for sixth, seventh, and eighth grade, dealing with craft and structure, how Arthur crafts a, a text, a literary piece, and how he uses it to move a story along or to make it more creative and more interesting. It's very important as you as a reader to understand that figure language language is used in literary pieces not necessarily be literal, meaning they're using it to project an image or a thought in your mind by comparing one object to another. For example, under figurative language, simile, one that you're familiar with. An example of a simile, when you compare two out the items that are different by using the phrases like or as is a simile. For example, he runs like a deer. Well, does he run exactly like a deer? Well, he has two legs, a deer has four, can he run as fast as a deer? But it's an inference to say this guy runs strong or fast like a deer, or he runs like a cheetah. Well, cheetah runs like 50, 60 miles per hour. There's no human being running that fast, not even Usain Bolt, contrary to what people actually believe. But other types of figurative language, like metaphors, like the snow is, is a white blanket. Well, this is comparing snow to being a blanket without using like or as, but it's comparing two things that are not alike. Snow is not laid out like a blanket, but when it's snowing outside and the ground is covered, if you guys ever been up north and you see the snow on the ground, you, it looks like a, if you had a brand new white blanket laid out of your bed. So the author is using that to give a visual description. And that's what's so important about similes. It's something that should be, you should be able to draw an uh, inference from and draw a picture in your head. Like they're saying, a picture's worth a thousand words. That means a thousand words should be like a clear picture. And figurative language is one of the ways in which an author moves the story along to convey that type of clear picture to you as a reader. So it's important that you pick this up when you're reading. Other types of examples are verbal irony, which involves saying something but applying something else. So when you, if you ask your parents a question like, uh, could you go out at night after they told you you can go out? They say, yeah, grab the car and go out. Here are the keys. And they taught you the keys. Of course they're not gonna, they don't want you to go out. They want you to go sit down and get out of their face. But they're just being sarcastic. So it's a way of saying stuff to you that they really don't mean it. So that's what verbal irony is. The fear, mere fact that you're asking to go out after they told you not and they taught you the keys, they're just being sarcastic. So it's a way of, so verbal irony moves it along and helps you realize it may add humor to a story. So you use verbal irony. And then you have personification when projecting human characteristics on non-human objects. So for example, when, you, when a writer uses a term like the wind called out to me. Well, he, they're really not saying the wind is like calling out, hey Bob, how you doing? He's saying it's so windy out that it makes a noise as if it's actually talking. So he adds to the setting of the story. And that's what's also important that you, the use of figurative language would not only add to the understanding and meaning of what's going on in the story, it may even actually help you appreciate the setting. Because remember, we're reading off of a flat paper. But these words should be able to project out and give us a clear image. So these are examples of figurative language which you're going to be exploring in this particular box on interpreting, under crafting structure, and interpreting the meanings of figurative language under assignment E5 under 2.4. So under crafting structure 2.4, you're going to go down to and find E5. And you're going to practice these particular skills related to this. So if you have any questions, save them for class. Remember, it's Adventure Week. Remember to believe in yourself, and we look forward to seeing you in class. I'm Mr. McDaniel. I'll see you on the other side. Take care, and have a good day.